Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Crusader Kings 3. Today we're going to be checking out the new free update to Crusader Kings 3. There will be a link in the description of the video to those free update patch notes. And I wanted to just double check that I made sure that I said that Paradox decided to sponsor me for this video. So huge thanks to those guys. However, in the email that I was sent, they said there was no review or approval necessary for the video. I feel like this was a mistake. I think today we'll be playing as a Basilius Constantinos X of the Byzantine Empire, the 10th rather. But we're gonna create our own ruler. Now when you're creating a character, it's often a good idea to know what you wanna achieve that game. And I'm pretty sure I know what I wanna do. Personally, my goal is very, very simple. And that's to just simply increase the number of dwarves in the world by the time my character dies. So we'll be playing a 16 year old dwarf who has lust burning within his soul, is incredibly deceitful and yet quite temperate and moderate in his disposition. Now you can do all sorts of really, really cool stuff with the ruler creator. You can pick your educational background, you can change your age, you can make your character fat or skinny. You can pick from all of the personality traits in the entire game. And not to mention all of the genetic and generatable traits, for example. I can give my dwarf the fornicator trait as well as the adulterer trait. Normally when you're playing Crusader Kings 3, it's all about optimizing for you know how big your empire is how many domain holdings you have how many how happy your vassals are no not today today my goal is quite simply to spread my dwarf genes as far and as wide as possible the other thing you could do is you can completely customize your character's appearance and i often find and i i do apologize for what you're about to witness because it's always horrific every time i do it in a game um i often find the most interesting way to find out how robust a character creator is is to just turn every single slider as far to the right as it will go so here's our head and neck we just slide and slide and slide i hope you're starting to get an idea of uh, of where this is going to be going that's the head and neck done and you know what he doesn't look too bad you know maybe a little bit odd looking but he's definitely got a chad like jawline and a cute little button nose with a questionable haircut but i mean he's 16 come on we've all had an awkward haircut when we were teenagers i feel like ears 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 is the area of the head where things can just go very very horrendously wrong and oh dear yep <laughs> uh oh uh oh this bodes well this bodes well for the future i also definitely feel like once you start pulling face sliders in games um you, you like you get to a point where it's like okay this isn't too bad it's like we we could stop here now and then oftentimes people are watching me and they realize that i'm not i'm not going to stop and that in fact this man's chin and forehead are just going to continue to expand until he is at least 20 percent chin and forehead oh dear he, he's starting to get a very sunken quality to his face oh the chin has changed angle the chin <laughs> the chin has changed angle oh no what have i done to this poor man <laughs> this is like um this is like if someone very poorly drew the Squidward Chad meme. You know, before before I destroy this man's face any further, I, I should really give him a nice eye color. I think I think a nice a nice darkish yellow. Yeah, that's a very nice color. Okay. Let's just start pulling every single eye slider to the right. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. His eyes. It's really not good. Like, I feel like you could almost get away with having a crazy... <laughs> the, the game is struggling to render this. <laughs> this is... I really do feel like this is how you know. Like, this is really how you tell if a game has a powerful character creator. Is if you can create something that, um, like, would be in, like, an 80s horror film. You know, in someone's basement. It's like, it's the thing! Oh god, it's gonna get me, but it actually turns out that it's like the local friendly, I don't know, you know, creature that watches over people. Honestly, <laughs> as far as this update goes, I I could, you know, I could end the video here and I'm happy. Like this I have gotten my joy out of this update already because this character creator has so much potential. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Oh my god! <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, okay. I'm actually crying a little bit. Can you see that I have been crying in laughter here? I do feel like the most horrifying option here is to go for like hair that closely matches his skin color. So that it just looks like an amorphous growth, like attached upon his head. Yeah, that's perfect. That's... <sighs> wow. Now we have to give our little dwarf a name and I'm gonna leave a very nice reference to an old YouTuber I used to watch. And I hope that people perhaps get what the reference of Franzibald Hairy Pants comes from. Now we still have a bunch of customization points left and I think I'm just gonna put everything into Intrigue to just maximize how likely I, although maybe some diplomacy would be good. Yeah, I think actually, you know what? I'll put a few points into diplomacy because I believe that's also used for personal schemes. And at that point, I'll just round out a few points and a couple of other things. All right, that's it, finalize. We are ready to submit our character. Franzibald, hairy pants of the Byzantine Empire. Let us begin. First things first is we would like to get married, but we don't want to pollute our pure dwarven bloodline. And so we're going to marry Cezania, who is a Cisalpine Catholic. We will take a prestige hit for this, but the chance of children is high and children of this marriage will be born into House Hairy Pants with the guaranteed inheritable dwarf trait. Marriage taken out of the way, let's go ahead and take care of our focus. We're gonna take the temptation focus because we want that fertility, attraction, opinion, and seduction scheme power, which are gonna be all sorts of things that we need to overcome the fact that we are a somewhat mildly unattractive person. We're starting our war with the Seljuks, which is a minor thorn in my side, but we'll take care of it nice and quick. Of far more importance to me is finding any female dwarf that I can that's in my diplomatic range and immediately beginning a scheme to seduce them. I recently upgraded my computer and I want you to just take a moment to appreciate just how quickly my computer burns through days in this game. I'm going to unpause it right now. And that's it. Seven days passed in about 20 frames of this video. My, this computer is ridiculously powerful. It, it honestly makes playing at 5x speed unplayable because the game is just like, how fast do you want to go? As fast as we can actually go. Unfortunately, it appears the target of our affection has gotten married and does not want to dishonor herself by committing adultery. That's okay, we'll go for some lower hanging fruit. Instead, we'll work on seducing Titum, Tietum, who is a 30-year-old wandering temperate dwarf. We have a 70% chance of success. With a couple of little events, we should be able to bump that up to a very nice number. Immediately after I declared my affection for Tietum, she died. So that's a bit unfortunate. The cause of death was an accident. I feel like this is very suspicious. Everyone I've tried to seduce so far has either died or gotten married. I wonder what it could be about Franzibal that is driving this absolute failure to seduce anyone. Another day, another seduction. This time we'll go after Asta, who is a 19 year old Swedish dwarf who is a courtier of Duke Sven. Our dear Asta has said, not even in my wildest dreams could I have imagined you were this passionate Franzibald. She exclaimed while desperately fanning herself. This gives us a nice budding interest in our seduction scheme. And now we've got a 50-50 shot at seducing her, which you know what? I'll take those odds. 50-50 shot seems to be a lot better than I've ever done in my entire life. In fact, I think it's more like a 5% chance. I decided to lose the war to the Seljuks, partially because uh, they had a lot more troops than me. And the other reason is because there's a massive faction to install someone else on the throne of Byzantium against me. And uh, I couldn't very well have my army getting murdered while this was on the way. But trying to get my dread up because it's the most effective way to get people to leave factions. Even with just 30 dread and a little bit of military recruitment, I've got this faction's power down to 124%. On the seduction front, we're going to make an attempt to make Asta our lover. Oh dear. Um, it appears that we've decided that the place where our romance will take place is in a privy. The privy is a small space and the air reeks of foul things recently deposited, but it is private. Oh, so private. This is honestly um, probably the worst fan fiction I've ever read. We're going to make Asta our lover because we would like to guarantee that she does get pregnant and have a dwarf son. Wait a minute. I, I haven't even unpaused the game and Duke Sven is already like revealing the fact that I am an adulterer with a Swedish dwarf woman. Why would you, why would you do this to me, Dwarf Sven? You live in Sweden, you've nothing got to do with me. Who are they to judge me anyway? 
Fate smiles upon me, my wife Basilissa Tiziana is bearing my child. We could also pick up our very first perk in the seducer tree, although it might be helpful to get the truth as relative to be able to fabricate hooks on people, but I think I'll take enticing opportunity to get some extra seduction scheme power. Our next target is a lustful Polish dwarf woman called Nawoya. Navoja? Navoja. I, uh, Polish people, please tell me how to pronounce this name. Anyway, this is practically a slam dunk because it's already an 85% chance of success. Although having said that, I can think of numerous times where I thought I had a slam dunk opportunity in the romance area on my hands that ended up fizzling out into uh, just pain and regret and, you know, crying on your bathroom floor. And I'm not nearly as, um, perhaps ungainly as Franzibald is. Our first daughter has been born. This is Princess Demetra Harry Pants of the Byzantine Empire. She is a dwarf who has been born in the purple, so she'll get a bunch of extra prestige. I probably should have done this right at the start of the game, but if I search in the character finder for dwarf characters, there are 102 dwarves out of about 25,000 characters, and my goal is to get that number to be as big as possible before I die. And with the addition of our daughter, there's one more dwarf in the world. The time has come to give Navoya a good old tumble. Okay, why why is it in a toilet again? What is happening? I think I think there's something wrong with my character. I mean, just look at him. That's definitely the face of a degenerate. Let's give it a try with Matea. She is a Slavanskan Pomeranian dwarf who is a wandering person with open terrain expert, perhaps a valuable ally in the quest to increase the dwarf population. My beloved's balcony is lit by a warm glow. And seeing that warm glow as an invitation, I shall go up and see if she's happy to see me. Oh, apparently she's reprimanding me because I'm the emperor of the Byzantine Empire and I shouldn't be climbing up into uh, wandering peasants' balconies uh, <laughs> in the throes of romance. I really don't think I... <laughs> what is this response option? Uh, sure. Kiss me again, my brooding witch. The other one just feels mean. Ah, time for a new flame. Over the years, I've received a great deal of portraits from various noble women, both foreign and local. Until now, they have mostly gathered dust in some attic. Perhaps I should bring them out and select my next romantic pursuit. I could picture myself with someone new. Countess Oda of Dockham. She is said to be thoughtful, but I've also heard rumors about her cloistered nature. Unfortunately, she's chaste. That'll be a no thanks. We'll be swiping to the left. Chieftain Sagar, the wife of Chieftain Mutan Sura, however, sent me a parcel with five portraits and they all look the same. She's not a dwarf, but it would really annoy this guy if I romanced his wife. So I'll put that one in the right pile. What about Begum Azarmidocht, the wife of Beg Karate of Ram Hermuz. She's widely known as a very charming woman. However, I've also heard she can be quite chattering. My big problem is that she is wheezing, but having a wheezing dwarf son kind of appeals to me, and she's also lustful. So that would give us a really good chance of actually having a child. I'll put her in the upper pile. Countess Gita, the wife of Count Sergios of Napoli, uh, she's a little bit old. She's 39 years old. I don't know what the upper age limit in the game is for having children, but I'm here to spread my dwarf genes. So you'll be going into the left pile. Atabegum Samea, wife of Caliph Al-Kaim of the Sunni Caliphate. <laughs> this is a definite keeper. I don't even, like, she's comely. Oh, let's go. Upper pile. Oh, yes. We became lovers. Amazing. This is the RNG home wrecker speed run. I am so happy. Like weeds in a garden, my fertility will increase, giving me a better chance of actually fathering the dwarf sons that I desire. My wife has become pregnant, although she is ill, which isn't great because I really would uh, like to get a son. And I don't know if poor Basilius Franzibald Harry Pants of the Byzantine Empire, I don't know if his heart could take it if he would have to remarry. Also, my lover Asta's belly has begun to grow and uh, she might have some splaining to do. I may as well confront her about the child and see if it's mine. And in fact, she has confirmed that it is my child. And this is joyous news. It must be shared among the world. And it will make me a criminal because technically adultery is illegal. Um, you know, for the Orthodox faith, but who cares? I, you know, I'll happily lose my devotion. I'm already a sinner. The truth is out. Nobody can use that secret against me. 
and the world knows that I have another child and maybe I could legitimize that bastard into my dynasty. Praise St. Bridget, Tiziana has given birth to another perfect little daughter. I was hoping for a son, but I'll accept a daughter. Her name will be Eleadora, and she is a dwarf who was born in the purple, of course, and hopefully will be a fantastic addition to my dynasty. Asta has also given birth to another daughter, and I'm going to legitimize her into my dynasty. She's now a dwarf legitimized bastard. The woman I dream about. Once again, I awake with a beating heart and the remnant of a fire smoldering in my loins. Oh dear Jesus Christ. Many nights have passed since I shared a bed with a beautiful woman I stumbled upon outside my castle, but my longing only grows. I must find her. My God, I'm going to throw away 135 ducats just to find this woman? Good God. My Lord, I present to you Matea. Brought to you before you upon your insistence. At last, as she stands before me, I feel like the time we shared never ended. However, beside her stands what appears to be her son, and I cannot help but react to his age. Uh, looks like I have another son outside of wedlock, and I'm going to invite Matea to come and join my court. Since I now know the identity of her child's father, I can expose the child's heritage. The secret that Zdenek, oh my god, how do you even pronounce these names, is my child is suddenly on everyone's lips. I already knew Zdenek was the result of my dalliances with Matea, but the repercussions for Zidina could be dire. To live life as a bastard is not an easy thing. Now everyone will know as well. I wish, wait, I can't legitimize him? He's my, he's my natural born son. Let me legitimize him. I want to inherit him. No, he's a bastard. He's not a legitimate member of my house. I can't legitimize him. Zidina carry pants. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've wanted you to be my heir. The good news is my wife is pregnant again, regardless of the ever sprawling, intricate a uh, fabric of bastards that I've spread throughout the land. She seems to be perfectly willing to give me legitimately born in the purple sons. Uh, Franz Bald has different plans. He plans to unshackle his lust to give him even better chances in seduction schemes. And what better target than Eliza, who is a Catholic Italian dwarf who's an eager reveler, I might add. Basilissa has given me another daughter. Far from ideal, but you know, I'll take a daughter. I really do want a son because my gender law is male preference promenigenature. Promogenature? <laughs> the oldest child inherits and there's a male preference. So it's usually better to have a male son um, in this sort of succession situation. The game thinks I have too many lovers, but I disagree. Romance is not about quantity, but quality. All right, let's gamble on this one and uh, look outside and shine upon my night, Eliza. Ugh, we're getting some bad rolls on these seduction penalties. I think we started off with a 70% success chance and uh, things have gone quite poorly since then. Uh, maybe I'll send her a gift and uh, apparently sending her a gift of money has boosted our success chance all the way up to 95%. <laughs> Okay, this, I don't know, this feels like it's a very, oh, I don't know about that one. Apparently in the world of CK3, if someone doesn't like you and you're trying to romance them, just give them a gift of cash. It'll, it'll make it work out. Our union will be as singular as her poem. We were fortunate enough for our poetry session to bear fruit in the form of a child. Keeping in character, we shall proclaim this child to be ours. Our hard work is starting to pay off, though. We're at 116 out of 25,000 characters being a dwarf. I don't want to keep you guys too long watching this video. Let me know what you thought of this, however. Did you enjoy this sort of different kind of playthrough where we don't focus on, you know, trying to achieve a game goal that's within the scope of the actual game mechanics and rather we kind of come up with our own wacky way to uh, quote unquote win. Like I said, I'll leave the video there for now because it's a bit of an experimental one. I don't know if you guys like this kind of thing. So let me know how you feel. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to click the link in the video to get the new free update patch notes and stuff. Bye.